Good day students, welcome to mathgotserve.com. In this clip we're going to be going over problems 11 to 15 of the next generation Accuplacer arithmetic test practice questions. Let's take a look at question number 11. It reads, which of the following is equivalent to 8 over 25? So one thing you want to remember is how to convert fractions to decimals, okay? So one thing I like you to recall is um, use long division to convert fractions to decimals. Okay, so that's the procedure we're going to be using to um, convert this given fraction into a, its decimal form. Okay, and then we want to see which of these options is equivalent to the result that we get. Okay, so we have 8 over 25. To carry out our long division, remember the procedure, we have the long division bar. The top dog goes in the dog house, so we have the 8 underneath the long division bars and the 25 is outside. Now how many times does 25 go into 8? Since 8 is smaller than 25, 25 cannot go into it, okay? So what we're going to do is put in a 0 point and then add a 0 behind the 8, so we have an 80. Now, how many times does 25 go into 80? If you think about your uh, multiplication tables, you have 25, 50, and then 75. That's 25 times 3. 3 times 25 is 75. So remember, division is repeated subtraction of factors, okay? So what we're going to do is just subtract out this factor from 80. 70, uh, 80, take away 75. You have and then we'll add another zero since we're already in the decimal point area we can just keep adding zeros without any problems okay how many times is 25 going to 50 two times because 2 times 25 is 50 subtract again we get 0 this tells us that there are no remainders our answer is 0 0.32 so 8 over 25 in decimal form is equivalent to 0 0.32. Answer to number 11 is option letter B. Okay, let's take a look at question 12. It reads, what is the remainder when 599 is divided by 9? So we know exactly what to do here. We're just carrying out our long division procedure. So we have 599 divided by 9. We can write this as, um, if it were a fraction, is 599 over 9. So we know what goes where. Okay? So 599 goes inside, and the 9 is on the outside. How many times does 9 go into 5? 9 doesn't go into 5, so we um, take a look at the next digit. We group these two together, 59. How many times does 9 go into 59? Our 9 times table will reveal that 9 goes into 59 6 times. 6 times 9 is 54. Okay? So subtract that factor. The biggest factor that's more than 59 is 54. Um, you subtract that factor out, 9 minus 5 is, 9 minus 4 is 5, we bring down this 9, 59 again. How many times does 9 go into 59? Still 54, 6 times 9 is 54. Subtract, you have 5. So what is um, the answer here? The answer is 5. Okay, the question asks for the remainder, what's left at the bottom after you carry out your long division algorithm. So the remainder is 5. 
answer to question number five, 12 is option letter B. Let's take a look at question 13. It reads, a machine is currently set to a feed rate of 5.921 inches per minute. The, machin the machinist changes the setting to 6.088. By how much did the machinist increase the feed rate? So let's take a look at the formula that is going to guide our problem solving process, okay? So this is going to be the formula for amount of increase. So the amount of increase is given by the final amount subtracted by what? Minus the initial amount. So that tells us how much the amount grew from the initial amount, okay? All right, let's go ahead and uh, apply this formula to this particular problem. So the amount, um, increase is going to be 6.088. Okay, remember it, the setting was changed to 6.088. This is the final amount that it was changed to, okay? What was it before it was changed to 6.088? It was 5.921. This amount is the initial amount or the initial setting, okay? So if you carry out this difference, we can know what, um, how much increase um, the machine has made. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to orient our difference vertically, okay? So we have 6.088 and it was subtracting. Now when you're orienting a difference of decimals vertically, um, you have to align the decimal points so you do not make place value errors, okay? So we have that aligned nicely. So let's go ahead and subtract. 8 minus 1 is 7, 8 minus 2 is 6, 0 minus 9, you can't take away 9 from 0 since uh, it's bigger than 0, so what we'll do is we'll borrow a 1 from the um, 1's place, make this a 5, when we carry that 1 over this becomes a 10. Alrighty, now we can subtract because 10 is bigger than 9, 10 minus 9 is 1, so we have 0.167 um, inches per minute. So the increase um, in feed rate is option letter A. Now let's take a look at question 14. It reads 0 0.075, 0 0.75% and three quarter which of the following correctly orders the values above from least to greatest? So we have four um, orientations here for ordering. So which of them is an accurate arrangement from least to greatest? So if you take a look at the options we have, we have a combination of numbers in different forms. We have decimal, we have percent, and we have fraction. So what can help us to convert, um, what can help us to order these numbers with ease? So let's consider the following tips, something to keep in mind on your AccuPlacer test when you are um, ordering uh, numbers that have different forms as presented in this example. So what you want to do is um, keep this in mind. So the tip is when Comparing decimals, like the first number, percents, like the second number, um, and fractions, 
what you want to do is you want to express all the numbers as what? What do you think the best form will be? Express all the numbers as decimals. Okay, that's the easiest to convert to and that's the easiest to compare. Alright, you don't have to find any LCDs or do any weird calculations. So just default to the decimal form and then that will facilitate the entire process. Okay, now let's um, go ahead and look at what we have here. 0 0.075 is already a decimal, so we leave it alone. How about 0 0.75%? 0.75% if we're converting this to decimal we just shift the decimal point to the left two places so you go one two that's how you convert a quick way to convert percent to decimal so what we're doing is we're dividing this over a hundred and converting that fractional representation into a decimal format so since we have an empty spot here we'll insert a zero so 0.75% is equal to 0 0.0075 in decimal form. Okay, so the top one is 0 0.075, this one is 0 0.0075. The last number is 3 over 4, this is a fraction. To convert this to decimal, we'll just simply do a long division like we did in the previous problem. 3 over 4, the top dog, 3 goes in the dog house, and then we have the 4. 4 goes into 3 how many times? It can go into 3 since 3 is smaller. Okay, so put a decimal point, and then we add a 0. 4 goes into 37 times. 7 times 4 is 28. And then we subtract. When we subtract, we have a uh, 2. Since we're in the decimal place area, we can just add a 0. 4 goes into 25 times. 5 times 4 is 20. So the decimal form for 3 over 4 is 0 0.75. Okay? So when we're comparing these numbers, we'll start from left to right. All the numbers have zeros in the ones place, so we shift to the tenths place. In the tenths place, um, three over four has a seven, the others have zero. Okay, so 0 0.75 is the greatest. Now, if we compare these two, we have to go to the um, hundredths place since they both have zeros in the tenths place, so we can't really order them. When we take a look at the digits in the hundredths place, 0 0.075 has a 7, 0 0.0075 or 0.75% has a 0. So that tells us that um, 0 0.075 is greater and the smallest is 0 0.0075 which is equal to 0.75%. So this is the least, and this is the greatest, and uh, this one is in the middle, okay? All right, so our answer for question number 14 is the one that's, that orders these numbers in this particular format. So 3.75 we know is 3 fourths, so which one has 0.75% first? So it should be 0.75% is less than 0 0.075 and that's less than 3 fourths. So let's see the option that has this um, orientation. So we have 0.075%. Answer to question 14 is option letter A. Let's take a look at question number 15. It reads, what is the value of 2.84 multiplied by 3.9? So something to note concerning multiplying decimals. It's a note. 
very important concerning multiplying decimals. What do you want to keep in mind? Um, when multiplying decimals, the um, number of digits, the number of digits to the right of the decimal point, to the right of the decimal point of the factors. Okay, so in this case we have two factors that we're multiplying, 2.84 and 3.9. We're looking at the number of digits to the right of the decimal point. These determine the place, um, determine where to place the decimal point of the product. Okay? So these determine the placement of the decimal point of the product. Okay, so in this case we have three digits to the right of the decimal point combined, okay? Two for the first and then one for the second, so it's three total. Um, so what does that tell us? So we have two here and then one here. It tells us that for the product we should have only three digits to the right of the decimal point. Okay, so we'll multiply as usual and then move the decimal point three places to the right and that will determine the placement of the decimal point. Okay, let's go ahead and carry out the multiplication. We have 284, 2.84, and then 3.9. Notice um, the orientation of the decimal point does not really matter here. Just align the um, numbers in this format where the rightmost digit of both factors aligned vertically like this, 9 and 4. So let's go ahead and multiply. Now when you're multiplying, imagine as though these decimal points were absent. Okay, think about multiplying 284 and 39 and then we'll deal with the placement of the decimal point later on by using the fact that we just noted. Okay, so let's multiply. We'll start with the ones place. 9 times 4 is 36. 6 carry 3. 9 times 8 is 72, but we have a 3, so we add the 3 to the 72, so we have 75. Place a 5 in the 10th place, carry the 7 over. 9 times 2 is um, 18. 18 plus 7 is 25, so we have 2, 5, 5, 6. Now let's shift to the tens place. 3 times 4 is 12, so uh, place the product directly under where this number is positioned, which is in the tens place. If we ignore the decimal points, carry a 1. 3 times 8 is 24. We have a 1 there, you add it to the 24, that gives us 25. 5 carry a 2. 3 times 2 is 6, plus the 2 that we carried over, 6 plus 2 is 8. Alright, so um, we're going to go ahead and add these numbers. Uh, so we have 6, <clears throat> Let's see we have, uh, do that, we have 6, 5 plus 2 is 7, 5 plus 5 is um, 10, so 0, carry 1. And then 1 plus 2 is 3 plus 8 is 11. Now the question is where do we place the decimal point? We have three digits so what we'll do is we'll start from here and then we're going to move it three digits to th three places to the left. 1, 2, 3. So we have only three digits to the right of the decimal point. So our final answer 2.84 times 3.9 is equal to 11.0 76. The answer to question number 15 
is option letter B. Thanks so much for taking the time to watch this presentation. We really appreciate it. If you found the contents of this tutorial helpful in your preparation for the Occupacer Next Generation um, test, do give us a thumbs up. Your positive feedback is very valuable to us. If you have any questions or comments about the contents of this presentation or any math questions on the Occupacer test, just place your questions in the comment section below and we'll be more than glad to support you. Do not forget to subscribe to our channel for updates to other cool tutorials such as this. More clips can be found on mathgutserve.com. Thanks again for watching and have a wonderful day. Goodbye.